Coming up on NBA to DA, the Heat, they are one game away from a trip back to the finals after their blowout win last night in South Beach. So how exactly are they getting it done? We're going to discuss. Plus, speaking of the finals, will the Nuggets end it tonight in L.A.? Or can LeBron and the Lakers avoid getting swept? We're going to be answering those questions coming up. And 10-time All-Star Carmelo Anthony, he renounced his retirement today. So we're going to relive some of the best moments from one of the greatest scorers to ever step on the court. NBA Today starts right now. Welcome to NBA Today. Kendrick Perkins, Ramona oh. Shelver, and Malika Andrews. We're also going to have Brian Windhorst stopping by from Miami in just a little bit. Hooey, Perk. What, what, what happened? I mean, should we be getting out the brooms already? Or? Not, not tonight. Oh, oh, not tonight. Not tonight. But in the other series? Yeah, oh, but okay. not tonight. Well, we'll show you oh. how this went down. I would say that this is a, a highlight, but really, no. for Celtics fans, you may want to avert your eyes. This is a heat light. This is something where I did not expect this, Kendrick. No. I, I knew that Jimmy Buckets was falling. I knew that the Heat are deep. I know that they are well coached. But my goodness, oh. is that Duncan Robinson feeding Bam for the alley-oop? Duncan why, Robinson? Why are we surprised? Did, Whoa. We, did we forget? Oh! Put him in a spin cycle. Yeah, he put him in the basket. <laughs> That's what he did. Is that why are we surprised did? about Duncan Robinson? Do we forget what he did in Nobody the Nobody forgot, but he hasn't played uh, all year, and now he's back in the rotation yeah, he's falling like right that. Now. The fact oh. of the matter is, the Heat watch were the, all gas. Watch Jimmy point at me. No <laughs> great. Stay petty so you don't have to get petty. All night long. And Grant Williams is like, yeah, yeah you know, know what? You got to take that. My the teammates best. don't have my back. And then in the third quarter, I mean, Bam was everywhere. Absolutely. Being a live threat at the basket. But great job by Eric Spolster by having spacing, running multiple actions to get that for Bam. It, it's almost like they could have Robert Williams in the game as a defender. Uh, oh, don't get me started with that. We're oh. going to get to that. Gabe Vincent, <laughs> game high, 29 points. And then Jimmy Butler letting the people know. And did this look familiar to you, Perk? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Al Horford doing it. Oh, you mean a little, like a little something like that? Yeah, it's no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Well, then, <laughs> end of the third, the Heat up big at this point. Oh, Window dressing. Robert. Jimmy Butler hits the mid-range jumper. The Heat go on to win 128-102. They take a commanding 3-0 series lead. Let's take a listen to Eric Spolstra after the game. That was a, a, a solid, mature, professional uh, approach. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of pent-up uh, stuff here. Um, and we're getting closer, uh, but, you know, we still have to, to finish this off. Believing, uh, you know, believing in one another, believing that we can get a win, believing that we can beat, you know, the number one team in the league. Uh, you know, when you belief is real uh, and we got a will to win. So the Heat, they won by 26 points in Game 3. That's the largest win by an eight seed since seeding began all the way back in 1984. They're also the third eight seed to win multiple games by 20 points in a single postseason, joining the 99 Knicks and then the 2007 Warriors. So I just want to make sure I get this right, Perk. This is the same Miami Heat team that was trailing the Bulls in the fourth quarter I mean, of a play-in game, mm -hmm. and now they're one win away from the finals. So, so how are they getting this done? Air exposure. Right, the best coach in basketball. Bam and Jimmy have shown us that they're one of the best duos in the game when it comes to the postseason when it matters the most. And all you have to do is surround them with a bunch of dogs. And that's what the Miami Heat has done. When you look at Gabe Vincent, he's not backing down from anybody. He loves the matchup. He's picking up 94 feet. He's not afraid to take big shots. You look at Max Struzzi, he don't care where he gets the ball at. He's going to let it fly. And Duncan Robinson, oh my God. We seen it in the finals. He didn't play a lot this season, but he's ready for the moment. And I cannot forget about the young fella, Caleb Martin, coming in off the bench. Yep. He is so skilled. And he has so much confidence. And talk about the leadership of Kyle Larry and Kevin Love, that yep. championship pedigree that's coming in, putting their body on the line. That's why the team is number one in the league and charges taken. 
You know, we talk all the time about if you have a player like Jimmy Butler, you just need to get, you have a window to win with him, right? You have a window with Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry. And when they got those guys, mm -hmm. the question was how, how wide open was that window? How long was it open? And it felt for a lot of time this year that it was over. Like these guys yeah. were, were older and they didn't, they weren't able to stay healthy. Kyle Lowry was hurt all year with that knee injury, but their experience in these playoffs it has been fun to watch just from a chess match standpoint. Like, they know what Boston's going to do before Boston even tries it. They are setting the tone. Boston is reacting to them rather than the Boston Celtics, the number two seed, right. putting their their power out there and making Miami react. There's no doubt that all of this trickles down from Jimmy Butler. Yeah. But can I do my best big perk and give some 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 flowers to the big man here? Because yeah. thing. Bam Adebayo has been incredible this postseason. And, and yes, offensively, yep. they're 6-0 when he scores 20 or more points. But defense. I mean, he has been everywhere. He, he, his defense has been great. He's been holding opponents to 38% shooting when he's contesting. His two-man game has been excellent. I just feel like it's a little bit of everything with him. And there were questions about him, too. That's right. And he get back to that all-star level. Where's he been at? And then all of a sudden, it's all hitting at the right time. And, you know, all year we talked, could those four guys, so that's Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, yeah. Carol Lowry, could they all play together? Could they, could they elevate each other? And it, 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 it's not even the question anymore. Yep. They, they can all play together. They're all taking their turn. And you mentioned Caleb Martin in this series. I think he's been he's been the second best player for the Heat. Right. Like he's been outstanding, and they, they he's the mismatch that last year they were not able to exploit. This year he has it. Do, do you know he was cut by Charlotte? He has a twin brother, and he was cut. Well, well, same on them. I mean, let's bring in Brian Windhorst into the discussion. He's actually in Miami. You were in oh, the building, oh, Brian. Well, what you. stood out to you watching the Heat up close? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about the Heat. I know that they are executing great right now. I know that Jimmy does his little trash talk and his mind games and he points and he looks at you <laughs> funny and all that stuff. But here's the thing. In the regular season, the Heat were a bad offensive mm -hmm. team. They were not just average. They were bad. They were bottom five in most offensive categories and they were 27th in three-point shooting, okay? They did not make three-pointers, which is one of the reasons why they battled to the end of every, almost every game and were relying on clutch play at the end of every game. In the playoffs, they are number one in three-point shooting. Number one amongst all the playoff teams. And by the way, if they shot this percentage in the regular season, they would have been number one in the regular season. So they've gone from being the 27th best three-point shooting team to the first best three-point shooting team. And when that is happening, everything else just works better. They, have, they are the second best offensive team in the postseason after the Nuggets. And they are playing a team in Boston who was much better defensively last year. Boston could get away with having yep. a bad offensive mm -hmm. night against the Heat in the playoffs last year. They can't get away with it anymore. So as much as this has been about the Heat, right, they've enforced their will on this series. And we also see the Celtics. They haven't given them much resistance at all, as we would expect it from a defending conference champion. Let's take a listen.